Good evening, good evening. Hello and welcome. Thank you very much for joining me this evening. Uh, my name is Heather Thomas. I, I am otherwise known as the Songbird Stamper. Um, here live on a Thursday evening, UK time, 28th of December. So I hope you all had a good Christmas. Hey Katie, hey Lisa, hey Danielle. Nice to see you. Uh, no, you're just, you're all keen and eager. I'm here, Katie, I am here. Um, shout if you can hear me. Um, I was running a little bit late. I was like, like the rabbit, you know, I was in Wonderland this evening. And I was, I was busy, busy, busy doing something else. Just playing. I was building a model. But here I am. Here I am. Hey, Anne-Marie. Um, so I thought we'd have a little bit of a play with this set tonight. Um, you may or may not have seen this card. It's just gone live on an Insta hop that I was part of today. Um, and this set, this stamp set, comes with a gorgeous set of dies. Hey, Julie. Oh, hey, Gary. Nice to see you all. Yeah, I hope you really had really good Christmases. Um, we had a lovely day on Saturday. I was working Monday, 12-hour shift on Christmas Day. Yeah. But it went it went fairly quickly. I took some stuff to do with me, and it was really quiet, so that's what we like. Hello, Carol. Ah, oh, hey, Louise. Nice to see everybody. So, yeah, I thought we'd have a play with this one. A bit of blending. I'm going to show you how easy this stamp set is. What's the light like? I'm hoping the light is good um, because my, it's, a bit, it's a bit dingy, but then if I put the spotlight on, it gets a bit um, kind of glary. So, anyway, what are we going to do? We're going to grab some colours. I've got daffodil, uh, pumpkin pie, daffodil delight, garden green, and granny apple green. We're going yellow. The light's good. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Oh, Judy, nice to see you this evening. How are you doing? Did you have a good Christmas with family? Now, we're going to use some paper for this. So we're going to start off with some paper that's part of the celebration. So, so, so. Carol, ah, oh, hello, another, another Carol watching from Canada. I saw you. I might, with a heart, that comment's going to go up in a minute. I'll see it better. I saw you, British Columbia and Canada. I've got some friends over in Canada. I need to go and visit them. I need to go on a Canada trip, I think. Um, so, yeah, this, this paper is the most adored 12 by 12 speciality design series paper. And it is free with a qualifying purchase in January and February. It's got the most gorgeous gold foiled designs. That's a bit out there for me, that one, but look at those flowers, aren't they stunning? The hearts, and then on the other side is pinks and reds. If you haven't already seen, I have done a live unboxing video, so if you want to see some more of these products in depth, you can go back and find those videos from me. Oh, did yours, yes, I'm stuck. I've had a parcel arrive today. Uh, it got held up with the Euro Tunnel strikes before Christmas, but it has arrived. I haven't checked it. I've literally just got home from work, had some tea, and um, I'm here. So, um, but I will, I will check. Now, don't make the same mistake I made with this paper. It's got hearts on it, and the card I made. Hey, Mandy, nice to see you. Good, but different up here. I know. But good, I, that's the nice thing, Judy, exactly. At least you were with family. And, um, but yeah, just a bit odd, I would imagine, your first Christmas up north. Up, up north, as they say. I um, spent a lot of time up north. So I'm going to cut this by 10 by 14. But this time I'm going to cut it so that the hearts go the right way. So down the page. Portraits. It's been a long, long week at work. I'm not going to lie. It's been one of those weeks. Um, but yeah, not too bad at all. But yesterday, everything kind of went wrong that could go wrong. <laughs> My day started by me driving into the most enormous pothole. Um, absolutely terrified me. So I'm just going to grab out my glass mat. Now, I'm, it's filthy, which is the reason it's not right in front of me. But because we're going to do some blending, um, I don't want to throw in my grid paper. This is what the glass mat is perfect for. So I'm going to take some Daffodil Delight ink, and I'm just going to start off on the mat and then we're going to come onto the page you could use a big brush but i've just got i happen to have the small one in front of me so and the nice thing is about using your um new glass mat if you don't have one of these and you're thinking well, what is that and where do i get one uh, you can get these uh, glass mats when you join stamping up so if you come and join our team join my family no that's the wrong way around join my team join our family 
um, in January and February, you can score one of these mats for free as part of the joining offer, which is amazing. You can pick that ink back up again, you see, so you don't waste any of it onto your paper. Not good to, oh, do you know what, honestly, Judy, the amount of potholes there are, it's ridiculous, but this one was almighty bang. I genuinely thought I'd broken something in the car, and the problem was it was straight as I was going onto the motorway, so I didn't really have a great deal of options apart from just to keep going. I slowed right down. I was going about 45, 50, just to make sure everything was okay, and the car felt fine, so I carried on. Um, but, yeah, I just, the, the bang was crazy how someone's not going to damage their car and then have an accident i don't know but yes that was the start of my day yesterday and it just kind of went downhill from the, downhill from there so i'm blending this in an ombre hey everybody hey everybody joining thank you for popping on it's that weird time of the year i always think at this time of the year i'm going to get scurvy from not eating enough vegetables fruit and vegetables it's that time of the year where you just seem to be living on mince pies sausage rolls cheese ham um i had some grapes for lunch today uh sweets chocolates biscuits um so the diet starts monday genuinely because i'm going to mexico and i really would like to just just lose a little couple of pounds i know i'm not i don't have a great deal to lose so i'm quite happy but just a little bit would be good uh, before I go to Mexico, so and to and to prevent myself from getting scurvy because that doesn't really feels like a possibility right now. Okay, I'm leaving a little bit of white at the top. Okay, but just just a little bit. Most of this is going to be orange, uh, yellow, sorry, and then blending it right out to that deeper colour. Doesn't look too deep for you guys. That's fine. Just that nice ombre coming down here. Okay, and then you can wipe off that just with your cloth, although mine is absolutely bone dry and not good for cleaning anything really at the moment. Cheese and crackers. As you said. <laughs> uh -huh. I love cheese and I love crackers, Mandy. So, yeah, I've been eating a lot of cheese and crackers this last week. We are just about out. I've got one more lunch. It will do one more lunch tomorrow and then that'll be it done. Don't use a light yellow, but you're making it. Oh, bless you, Julie. I don't normally like yellow either, but I seem to be in a bit of a yellow streak at the moment, uh, which is good. Hello, Shaz. Nice to see you this evening. Thank you for hopping on. Spending your evening with me. Um, it's that, I say, that strange time of uh, in between Christmas and New Year, and no one really knows what's going on unless you've got to go to work. So what I'm going to do now is just cut a piece of gold foil. So I've just got a strip. Of gold foil. I'm going to cut this. Sadly, my corners have got bent. They're around there. But I'm just going to cut a strip of gold foil. Uh, what's this going to measure? Three quarters of an inch by 10 centimetres. So, yeah, apologies. I've mixed up my measurements again. So, three quarters of an inch by 10 centimetres. Trim that at 10. And then three quarters of an inch. Although that's not straight. Let's that trim that there. And then we know that'll be a straight edge. Three quarters. Now, I don't normally do this, but something just told me that I want to just score this. Um, so I'm just moving it. I don't really know where to. I'm just going to kind of make it up, really. What's that? Two millimetres? Let's go three millimetres. I'm just going to score this. And it's just going to give me this nice little decorative edge. Ah, oh, thank you, Shaz, for asking. It was fine. It was fine. There was just two of us in. Skeleton crew. Nothing was moving. Uh, we had a couple of smaller commercial... Sorry, sorry, smaller pleasure craft. Just went out on a quick Christmas Day sale. But absolutely uneventful which was great so um yeah it was nice it was well as nice as as nice as it can be when you're at work on christmas day but it was fine it was fine um it went fairly quickly as well actually which amazed me the rest of the week however has not but um yeah it went really quickly okay and so what i'm going to do is just stick this down with a little bit of tape runner
So we're just preparing the base of the card at the moment. And I'm just going to stick that uh, roughly four and a half centimeters up. So what's that? Four and a half centimeters. Let's go from here. Uh, 30, one, two, three, four and a half. So we're going about here. I like to use the grid paper lines. I don't always like actually line it up exactly on a line, but you can at least use the lines to help you help you see if you've got that fairly straight. That looks fairly straight. And then we're going to go for a little bit of tape front and back. And then we just stick this down. We're going to put something over the front of this. So I'm not actually too worried if it lifts up. Now you can tape it down all the way across, but this is a sheer ribbon. And this is the gold and very vanilla. It's absolutely stunning, this ribbon, and perfect, not just for Christmas. Am I working over the new year? I am working New Year's Day. So it, the night shift, though. So uh, we're currently in, in family discussions about what we're going to do over New Year's. Do we drive down to Devon? and drive back on New Year's Eve, um, which I don't really fancy doing, but uh, we want to see Russ's family as well. So yeah, we're in discussions, but yeah, I've got to go back to work Monday night, so. Okay, now we're gonna grab, I've just used a white card base. Um, you could use a colored card base for this if you wanted to as well, but I have gone, I have gone white. Ah, oh, hey Louise. Thank you for hopping on this evening, everybody. I had all the best intentions of the world to get you a couple of tutorials out this week, but I've just been having a bit of fun while we've been quiet. If I've not been working, I've just been doing a few of my Christmas presents. I got um, bought myself a Lego set for Christmas. Um, I've taken after my mum. When I was younger, it was one Christmas I remember, and um, my mum was opening presents. And um, my dad said, oh, I don't remember buying you that. And she says, that's because you didn't. He said, well, who got it for you then? She said, I bought it for myself. So I said, Mum, why did you buy yourself a present? Um, she said, because at least I know then I'll get something I like. <laughs> so um, I just, <laughs> I've kind of taken after her. So I bought myself a um, Lego Creator three-in-one set. Um, it was a parrot that turned into a frog that turned into a fish. And I've loved it and I've taken it apart. I've built all three and then rebuilt it as a parrot. Um, and so, yeah, exactly, Katie. Wrap it up and pop it under the pop it under the tree. Oh, yeah, thanks, Carol. I love the way the, the gold foil works. And just that little bit of edging detail with the trimmer really helps to kind of make that a central point. So, um, yeah, my hubby's family do. We're not married, but, yeah, his family live live close to you um but it's just it feels like such a long way to me um it's such a long drive especially when the roads are, are going to be a bit crazy with holiday traffic but we shall see yeah so i took it apart built the frog uh built the parrot then took it apart built the fish then took it apart built the frog then took it back apart and built the parrot um and now i'm going to go on tomorrow i'm going to go and buy a medieval castle because um it looks amazing from smith's so I'm going to go and buy myself that tomorrow with some Christmas money that I got from Russ's family, which is lovely of them. They never really know what to buy me, so they, they decide that I could get something for myself, which is amazing. That's so kind of them. Ah, uh, hey, Claire. Hello, Rachel. Hello, everybody. So this is the base to our card. Now we're just going to design the focal point. So um, we're going to use the Abundant Beauty, sorry, Enduring Beauty. We had something called Abundant Beauty, didn't we? And it's this gorgeous stamp set that comes with these masks. So I'm going to show you how to do this. And I probably have got time to do two cards today. Um, but So we'll see. We'll see where we go time-wise. Probably have got time, that says. Um, but one of the things that I want to show you how to do is something a little bit different with this one. I imagine lots of people stamp this and then cut, um, use the mask to colour it and then cut it out. Um, but we're just going to do something a little bit different. So we're going to cut ourselves a panel measuring two and three quarters. I really want to do this in centimetres. So let's go seven centimetres by ten. Seven centimetres by ten in basic white. I 
started making myself a Christmas album as well. So, oh, that's what I, I that's what I was going to do for this live this time. I forgot. I was going to make. Um, I was going to show you all, so I will show you at some point, but I was going to show you all how to make a Christmas album, because this was one from two years ago. Oh, well, we had a really lovely Christmas, and um, but they're so easy to make, like the binding is just so easy, so I was going to show you all how to make that, but I forgot, and now we're doing something else, so, you know, life moves on. So 10 by 7, so let's cut this, it's not a straight edge, is that a straight edge? Yeah, that's a straight edge, so let's cut that to 7. And that down at 10. And then we want one more. That is seven and a half. I don't know what's a straight edge and what's not. I've got totally, totally bamboozled. Seven and a half by ten and a half. Uh, so let's go ten and a half by seven and a half. Is that a straight edge? Yeah. Yeah, the rose would be nuts. Oh, has he? Oh, isn't that funny, Shaz? You live down there and I live up here and our families are at different ends. <laughs> we'll both need to move, although then I'd be further away from my family. So you can't win, really, can you? How long did it take your brother? Oh, bless you. How, how, uh, yes, Judy, that is definitely, it's definitely a plan. I, I might try. Uh, I might try and do that next week. Shall I do that next week? Does everyone want to see how to make that Christmas album next next thursday uh no not next thursday because i'm on nights it would be the, the one after it's a bit late in the game but you've got all year to make a nice christmas album so anyway we've got two pieces of cardstock here one just one just left less than the other okay and then what we're going to do is grab this stamp set with just some memento ink because this is photopolymer it makes this really easy we're going to take the smaller piece of cardstock we're going to take our big block I mean, this stamp doesn't quite fit on the, doesn't quite fit on, but honestly, it doesn't matter because we're not actually going to stamp the whole lot in, on anyway. So I might just, I might just do this. This is roughly where I want my stamp to go, something like that. And then I'll line that up over the top so that I know everything that's going to stamp onto the white is going to be under a block. And then we'll take some memento. Doing Lego or watching? Ah, oh, bless you. Well, ah, uh, that's cool. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed. Thoroughly enjoyed making my parrot. Found it very zen. I said to somebody today, I was just, just following the instructions, finding the pieces. Found it very relaxing. Okay, so we're going to line this up straight, and we are just going to stamp this over the top. So I can see in a couple of places the ink is just pooling. And what I mean by that, it's almost beading on the surface. I should still get a good impression. I have primed this, but not very well. Um, so I'm just going to stamp that. I just missed a little bit, but that's okay. And that's the image we get, kind of half on, half off the page. So rather than stamping the whole thing, colouring it out and cutting it, when we layer that, and you'll, it will really pop when we get some colour onto it. You just get it kind of half on and half off that design. Yeah, perfect. Well, you, enough of you have said that you'd like to see it, so I can certainly do that next week um, because I'd like to make mine as well. So um, well, whenever I'm back on, I, I don't think I'm on. I'm pretty sure I'm on nights next week. I lost track of where I am. Okay, so these masks, there's five of them, and then they come with this number at the top. Can you see it? One. Can you see that number one? And then it goes, it's a bit odd because it, if you follow the numbers, you then get the leaves next. And then you go back to flower, then back to leaf, then back to flower. So I'm just going to do it my own way, which is to grab the mask, stencil, mask, whatever you call it, and line it up over the flowers. So these ones are pretty easy to do. Can you see how that just lines up? And then those five flowers come right up. Really obvious. Always open your ink pad before you put your mask down, which I never remember to do. And my biggest trick for stenciling is just don't go crazy with the ink. Everyone always feels like you've got to put loads of ink down, um, but actually just a really light cover 
what looks like hardly anything actually turned out to be quite a lot. So, and you can always add more, but you can't take it away again. And you don't want it too, too dark. So you want enough color down that it looks good. But you don't want to go crazy heavy, heavy with the color. See, when I pull that away now, you've got this beautiful color yellow. You could go in there, that will take a little bit more. So then you just go in and line up your mask again. And go back in. But like I say, you can always add it. You just can't take it away. And now I've got fairly strong fingers, but you might find you need to take these down. So you can just use some um, masking tape or you can use some craft tape, whatever you think. So we've got beautiful colours there. Now I'm going to grab the orange pumpkin pie and I'm going to add, this makes it just so simple to colour. I, st I started colouring this with the, um, <laughs> I started colouring with the blends actually and then quickly decided I might try using the masks and I haven't looked back. So this one's a little bit more difficult to line up but I'm looking here at the base of this, so the base of this kind of flower here that base of that just fits nice up with that one. And then you're gonna see, you just keep moving it around. So that base lines up exactly. And then the top of this one is not far off either. So just make sure that none of your lines are outside. You can see this leaf here as well. That shape lines up exactly around that leaf shape. And then just these little bits here. And then you can take your pumpkin pie. So this is the hardest part of this to line up, I think. Take your pumpkin pie and you can go over your design, the whole lot in that pumpkin pie. You could even do this with Daffodil Delight and then, um, sorry, with Lemon Lolly and then Daffodil Delight. I haven't gone dark, dark, just enough of a pop. And you can bet, I mean, you can barely see it. We, we say a lot about colouring that actually some of the best colouring is where you don't notice it, but you can, if you look, you can see that shading. Do you not line up the V? Yes, now, you're exactly right. You do line up the V, but obviously because I'm not doing this over a whole sheet of paper, I haven't got the V. So what you would have to do in that case is let's say pop this in the middle. So line this up with the center point of your grid paper. Then take your first mask. Now you'll need a pencil. I don't know if I've got one to hand, but I may have. I've got a pen, this'll do. Okay, so at this point here, you would now mark a little V where the V is in the top of your stencil. So that when you came to put your next layer on, you just make sure your artwork is lined up in the same place. And then you take your stencil and you would line it up so that the V is in the same place. I just find that more challenging personally, because I'm like, well, it, it, your angle only has to be a couple a degree or two off. Um, so I tend to just try and find the points, but you absolutely can. You can just go for the V in the top corner and do it that way if you'd like to. But yeah, I find I just find that a bit more challenging. But that's the way they're designed. You're absolutely right. And they're designed just to be able to kind of line them up one over the other. So we might want to put a little bit more orange on if you wanted to. I'll just add a little bit more so you can see the difference um, with a bit darker. Again, just line that up. And then grab some of that orange. So that's it with a little bit darker. So you see how that comes up. Hello, Donna. Nice to see you this evening. How are you keeping? Did you have a good Christmas? Now, there is this one as well, which goes over the top. Um, and that just sits over those stamens. That's quite easy to line up. I actually didn't really like it. I quite preferred it. I just preferred it a little bit plainer like this. I thought the black stamens were plenty enough for me. So I'm not going to add that one, but you could if you wanted to. And then we're going to choose. Now, this is where 
for me, this comes into its own because I'm going to use the colours granite or green and garden green. We don't have a garden green stamping blend. So if I want to um, put this stencil down, this is stencil number two. And if I line that up and do that with granny apple green, if I wanted to make it darker and do some shading with the blends, I, I haven't got a um, garden green stamp and blend. So I get a bit stuck. Whereas here, we've got a garden green ink pad and we can sponge that ink on and it just looks beautiful. So this is granny apple green. We're just going in with some of that all the way over. Again, how quick and easy is this to colour? Obviously, it would take you guys quicker than it's taken me because we're just going through a few bits and bobs. And I'm demonstrating it. But... So that's the granny apple green. And this is going to really come to its own when we take it off the grid paper and put it onto its backing paper in a minute. And then you got your granny apple green. And then this one just goes over the top. So again, just make sure you've got the mask the right way up. This is mask number four. And this is going to start to do some of those. Um, I'm lining this one up with the, can you see the stems don't have any colour at all yet. And I'm just going to line these up with the stems. Now, if you get really confused, it might be that you've got your mask upside down. So make sure you've got your mask the right way up. Then line that up so that all those stems line up. Keep twisting it around until you get there and that the leaves all look good. And then you can grab that brush, grab some of that garden green. Make sure you get in all those little holes. And put some nice shading down on there. Ah, oh, hey Louisa, don't you worry at all. You are here and that is makes me so grateful. So when you put that on the white, I love then how you get that off the page look. And that's how I achieve that, by stamping onto that just white piece of card, using those stencils. And then look how that really pops when you lay it onto that outer layer. So we are just gonna simply pop this on here. So I've got one more card, I reckon. We can fit one more card in today because this has come together really quite quickly. Now, my biggest question is, which way up does it go? I think it's that way up with this one at the top, but then that's upside down. <laughs> and I debated for a long time trying to figure out which way to put it on. It's a really pretty stamp and stencil, this one. It is great. So I'm just going to put some dimensionals on here. I'm going to try and avoid this bit, so we're just going to put some on. The actual card, just so that I know that I don't have to guess where they go. If I was to put them on the back of here, I'd have to guess. Because if I put them on top of that panel um, that I've already placed on, then it's going to be raised up even higher. Now this is where it all goes wrong and I find I can't stick anything on straight. Let's go for it. That'll do, pig, that'll do. And then all I did was just a very, very simple birthday wishes and that is my birthday card. Pretty in yellow, huh? You could do that with any colour you wanted as well. And that would work with any colour you wanted. Flowers, any kind of leaves. Uh, so, yep, you can go crazy. Uh, just very, very simple design. Um, uh, thank you, Carol. Thank you so much indeed. Really enjoyed making that one. And I love that paper where you can blend onto the gold foil. Yeah, the colour is great. It's just so easy, so simple. It's fantastic. So I'm going to show you two cards. You may already have seen one. My memory is atrocious. I can't remember what I've already demonstrated. Which one of these two would you like to see me being made, see, see me making? This one is going to take longer, but I can show you how to. This one is coloured with stamping blends. 
Um, and this one is coloured, but you may already have seen the one on the left. So you let me know which one you'd like me to spend half an hour making. If we've already seen this, we've I, th I can't remember. I honestly don't know. Ah, oh, thanks, Judy. Thank you, Eloise. Thanks, Lisa. Katie says the blue one. Louisa says the right one. I may have convinced you to get the mask. <laughs> I hope so. Pink one, the right one. Blue one. Oh my goodness, we're getting an even split. The right one, the purple one. So the pinky purple's got more votes at the moment. So, and I think I've definitely showed you, I've definitely showed you this one. So let's have a look at the colouring then. Right one. Uh, any more for any more. So I will clean off my masks very quickly. I might actually have to do... Oh, I have, I have to use a tissue. And not only tissue, I'm going to have to use a posh tissue. Pink. The right one. Go on then, let's do the pink one, in which case I don't need to clean my masks up either. Okay. So this is, um, has anybody kind of seen Gina K designs? This is very her. Um, and I really love the versatility of this stamp set. So I've just simply coloured, uh, stamped it again in the Memento. And I've stamped it onto um, basic white cardstock. Is it going to fit on here? I got some of this free in my um, parcel from Stamping Up. It's a very handy size to have on my desk. So this one is really simple to make because for those of you who want to see this one, I'm sorry he didn't get shown. Um, I have shown how to do this. This is Flirty Flamingo, uh, Melon Mambo, Lost Lagoon and Pretty Peacock. That's the colours I've used on that one. Flirty Flamingo, um, or is it Berry Burst? But it's very light, so one of the darker pinks. Just die cut some of the leaves, put a strip of that gorgeous designer series paper, lay it onto the Pretty Peacock, lay it onto the gold, Stuck on a big card blank. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, so this one we are going to stamp two of these. And then we will, we might not get it all coloured because it takes quite a while to colour, but I will at least show you how to do half the card. And then the other half is exactly the same. So you're going to stamp two of those. Okay, we're just going to do one for now. And then I've used, this is where my memory, you are going to test my memory. Flirty Flamingo, Bubble Bar, this is where I really ought to write things down, and Berry Burst, potentially. No, definitely not dark flirty flamingo, definitely not flirty flamingo. So we've just got bubble bath and berry burst. You follow Gina K as well? Yes, they're lovely, lovely flowers. Oh, the combo, yeah, the combo of the pinks, but don't put flirty flamingo in there. It's too, it's too salmon-y a colour. But um, either a, a melon mambo or a berry burst and um, berry burst and flirty and bubble bath now it does just take a little bit of blending so I'm going in with my dark going in with my dark uh, berry burst to begin with just around the stamen area okay and then we're going to go in with the uh, light berry burst and we're just going to bring some of that up and I'm just popping some as well just on these art where these artist lines are Just going to start to add a little bit of colour up those top ends as well and then you want to take your dark bubble bath and this is where you just need to work that colour one of the biggest problems um, I see people when they're blending make is they don't work the colour enough
the other thing that you can do is actually just um, work more, more, more one section at a time. Can you just see that's just starting to blend out now? It needs quite a lot of ink laid down. Almost just scrubbing back and forth against those lines. But um, I kind of realized as I was coloring this the first time around that I didn't actually need to get rid of all the lines. It didn't need to be a smooth, smooth blend. And then we can go in with the light bubble bath right on those outer tips. have ordered another backup. Oh look, I've missed a petal. So we can go back in and I've missed that outer one there as well. Yeah, you don't need to get rid of all the lines. You don't have to have a very, very smooth blend. It's almost impossible when you use some of these darker colors um, with the very, very light colors. It's almost impossible to get a very smooth blend. So if you work petal by petal, it's going to be easier. That I will say. So because the ink is wet, it hasn't dried, and you're going to get a better blend if you work with the wet ink than if you've let it dry. I'm not going to bother with the light on that one. I'm just going to come all the way out with the dark. Can you see that blended a lot easier? Or I just did. I was just being lazy at first, I'm trying to do the whole flower in one go. So that's dark very burst, just a very thin strip of the dark and the light. And then again, that will blend much easier because it's wet ink coming out to that bubble bath colour. And that's it. That's it for the flowers. It's, it looks, I always felt, I kind of felt, oh, it looks a bit messy. Never write things out. I really, I know, I really should, Louisa. I've, um, well, maybe I did. I used Martin's Martin's Mayhem sketchbook. Um, yeah, I put Berry Burst and Flirty Flamingo, but the Flirty Flamingo didn't just didn't look right. So, uh, Berry, oh no, here we are. Berry Burst, Bubble Bath, Granny Apple Green, and Old Olive. So, there's my nail. I quite like these little sketchbooks. They're quite good. So let's do this flower here where we've got the center just coming up there in the dark. Again, I'm just going to try and do half the flower at once rather than all of it in one go. Um, but see how much longer this takes actually to color it than those stencils. You could absolutely just do this with the stencils um, and then get the same. You could make this card. I'm going to show you how to make this the the card even if my even if my coloring is not finished I'll show you how to create that but yeah that would be it's all much quicker than masks I just enjoy coloring so I decided I wanted to sit here and, and color it in it was just more of a therapeutic activity rather than making a card in a hurry So what's everyone's plans for New Year's then? Nice quiet one, or are you going out, going around for families, friends? We um, haven't decided yet, like I say, but we quite often go around to my dad's for board games on New Year's, which is fun. We're a very board gamey playing family. I bought Russ Mastermind for Christmas. Well, actually, I bought it for us. Mastermind, the old kind of peg game. Does anyone remember that? What's the book? Oh, that's Martin's Mayhem Sketch. It's called Sketch Mayhem. So um, Martin Stone was an artist and design team member. And then last year he created this book. Um, it's got room for square cards, landscape, horizontal, uh, this slimline cards, and then mixed card sketches, color combos. So it's a nice little book. And it's available at Amazon. I know he would be grateful of the support if you fancy getting one. 
sleep. You don't do your New Year's. No, well, we don't go crazy at New Year's, but sometimes just like to, um, I like to watch the fireworks on the telly. Sleep too, so lots of sleeping. Oh, Lisa, I love Mastermind. So there's a company called Jacks of London, um, and it's wooden. It's a lovely wooden boxed game. Um, I love it. He's never played it. He'd never played it before. We might have a game tonight, actually, because it's really quick, isn't it? It's a kind of 10-minute, guess the colours, really good game. Oh, you're gonna have some. <laughs> you're gonna play some board games as well, Emma. Fantastic. I, I do. I like a good board game. There's so many different types out there as well. I thought the reason I was laughing there is because I thought you'd spelt it wrong. I thought you'd put B O R E D. I was like, oh, I was gonna make a joke. So you're not a massive fan of board games then. <laughs> so I know some are and some are and some aren't. But yeah, my brother works for a board game company as well. That's how into it. They've got lot, loads of them, and he gets a lot reduced price where the damages and things. So he's very lucky, and we're very lucky because we get to play them. And they encourage board game playing uh, at um, in their downtime as well at my brother's work. I'm going to the London Palladium for the pantomime, Peter Pan. Oh, are you? Well, that's a nice way to spend New Year's, actually. Yeah, because you're not kind of. Um, you're not kind of going out like partying or anything, but and hopefully it won't be too crazy in London. I saw the pictures of when Emma, you went up to London and it just, oh gosh, it looked a bit too busy for me. I'm not going to lie. I'm not really a busy, busy kind of person anymore. Played a lot of games yesterday. You lost hours. <laughs> that is the problem, but it's good fun. It's, it's um, better than losing hours on the phone. That's what I think. Just going to add a little bit of colour around those. I'm trying to work out which bit is leaf and which bit is petal, I think, at this, with some of these. And again, that's where the stencils just make it so easy. But, you know, I love my colouring. So I couldn't really not colour this one in. I don't, I've kind of forgotten it took so long, though, if I'm honest. It was it really busy, was it? Was it people shopping or was it just people out enjoying the lights? Like, go home and let me enjoy the lights. I guess that kind of thing, like, if you went up earlier in the year, so they come, because the lights come on in November, don't they? It might not be quite so busy. Because I would, I bet it's amazing. I'd love to go and see it. I'm just going to move on to some leaves in a minute because I'm getting a bit bored of the, all the flowers, even though I love colouring. It's a dark brew burst and it can be a bit tricky to see what's what, so I'm just going to hazard a guess around there. These two as well at the back there. We got on about them. I went yesterday to the O2 Disney on ice. It wasn't as busy as you thought it would be on the trains. Was it not? Was it quite quiet on the trains? Um, yeah, I really rarely catch a train. We the last time I caught a train to London was for oh for the artisan dinner that I went to, um, and I come back on the train. No, that was that was quite quiet. Actually, it was scarily quiet because there was a few people causing problems. Let's say. Um, you just don't know do you you just can't tell how busy the trains are going to be i suppose okay so i've done three flowers i've got two left i'm going to move on to the leaves and i'm going to pull out granny apple green and old olive so these are colors that you might not necessarily think go together um and they don't really, so I'm just going to show you what I did with it. 
So Granny Apple Green, um, I'm just gonna go in with the dark like normal. So a little bit of dark at the base and up the tops, just like I would normally color. I normally always start with the dark first and then go up to the lights. Um, so this is the light Granny Apple Green. Get a good blend by kind of putting down multiple coats in that middle bit. And then that's my leaf. And we're just gonna keep going around like that, but it doesn't have as much interest as I want it to, especially because we've got quite a detailed and gradiated flower there. The leaf just looked a bit flat and boring. Um, so I brought in the old olive. This is where I would absolutely love to have a garden green blend because that's the colour I feel it needs. One day, maybe this year, maybe this year, they're gonna, my dreams will come true. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of the dark old olive and I'm just going to stipple like with lines. So I'm just doing this, just short lines. Um, and you really don't need many. And that is, you're hardly going to see it at distance, but it is going to make a difference in that centre bit. But you don't want to go heavy with this because it would just look a bit odd. But I am hoping you can see that just brings it to life. And just adds a little bit of depth. Got to get the kids to bed. Nighty night. Thank you for popping on. Have a wonderful New Year's if I don't see you before, Eloise, and I'll see you soon. Yeah, take it easy. Have a good evening. And then this, again, I'm just going in with the dark granny apple green on the centre of those. So we'll do that again. So I've got my dark here. So this is how I would normally colour dark and then into the light. And that would give me a really nice smooth blend and gradient. But with the detailing you've got in those flowers, it will look flat. I'm just going to do this and then leave it so I can show you the difference. Adding that little bit of old olive in there will make. So that's it, just flat. And that's it, added the old olive in. Ah, oh, hey Grace, nice to see you. Been a long time since I've seen you. How are you? Did you have a nice Christmas? And then again, just go in more at the base and just a little bit up there. Just adding in a few flicks. Try not to get it on your um, flowers. A few flicks of that old olive, even though I actually don't think the two colors work together. Um, I wouldn't normally blend and shade them together. It works, it works well like that. Okay. I'll do these and then I will show you how I made the card because we're at 10 to. Um, and I don't want to run out of time. I could be, we'll be here all night if I finish this card, I think actually. Um, I certainly don't have time. <laughs> I want to. I want to finish, but I'm really tired after my week. I start to lose my words. I'm like I don't function. I'm getting old. That's what's happening. Getting, getting old. Okay. A little bit. Of, so just a little bit of that old olive in there. Then I'm going to bring in the dyes. So, you, I mean, I'll, I'll finish colouring this afterwards, I'm sure. But I would just want to show you how I need to find my dyes first. They were right here. I got them out of the set. Here they are. No? Here they are. So this is the Enduring Beauty dyes. And I love this one. So this is, um, you get quite a lot of sentiments in this set. Now the sentiments are at 90%, so they're a bit bigger than you see on the case. Okay, and it's all dotted, so it's a really nice stitched die. So we're going to use that one in a minute. 
but the main one, and it's got these gorgeous little leaves cut out, so that's what I used for the gold on this one here. I'm just going to line this up. And then I, this is my brain. Come on, brain. You can do it. This is why I fussy cut. <laughs> you found my secret. This is why I fussy cut. I can never figure out which way the I mean, dies fit. My spatial awareness is awful. You'd never think I was a navigator, would you? I don't know how, but I, I don't know how, but I was good at my job, I promise. But, yeah, baffles me as well. Okay. So we're going to run this through. Now you would be doing two of these, hence why we would be here all night. You do talk a lot of rot, <laughs> I know I'm not old. I know. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get there though. We're all gonna get there. I'm older than I was. That's I'm definitely older than I was. Okay, so this is basically the colouring that I did. Um there we go. Is it like that? Where is it? Where is it? So I told you, I'm not very good at this kind of thing. There we go. So I've technically coloured the wrong part. Well, I haven't. I just stopped. Anyway. Shush. Okay. So we're going to grab a piece of cardstock measuring 10. I no. I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock measuring nine and a half. So this will do. So I've made my card a bit of a funny size because I was going to mat and layer it onto a big card blank, but then I decided not to. So if you wanted a triple layer, so white, then the mat, and then the card base, you would need to be cutting this one at nine and a half by thirteen and a half. Okay, so nine and a half by thirteen and a half, which is smaller than this one here, quite considerably. Okay, and then your mat will be your pink mat would be um, ten by fourteen, and your card blank would be fourteen and a half by twenty one scored in half at ten and a half. So standard size card blank, then your mat at ten and by fourteen, and then your layer at thirteen and a half by nine and a half. Then what you would do is take your um, two die cuts, place them on one here and one here, and just kind of get a feel for where you think you want it to be. Okay. And then what I would go and do is put some die, um, some dimensionals around here, and some dimensionals around here, and then stick them on. And I'm I'm looking to cover up all of this edge and this edge. So I'm covering up, can you see? If I turned it over, I would have die cut hanging off all of this edge and all of this edge. And then what you would do is turn it over exactly like this and chop. And you chop there and chop there. And that is what would then give you your finished card. So it's raised up on dimensionals. It's hanging off the edge at both ends and it's popped up and then you've just got this small gap. That's why you want to line them up to begin with, just to make sure that you kind of know. You can even do a little tiny pencil mark there and there, and then you know where to stick it down next time. But you do want to make sure you've just got this little border in between the middle there. And that's what makes that look really pretty. And then it's simply a case of stamping your sentiment, die cutting it out with your little die cut, Hanging it off the side, and then these gems have these have been around for a while now. These ones, and they're absolutely stunning. They're melon mambo, um, which I'm thinking I may have used melon mambo in the um, may just be a bit a little bit less kind of dark. Can you see it looks a little bit less, or I just went a little bit less heavy handed? Um, so yeah, try it with both. I quite like the berry burst. I think it. I think it's the same berry burst. So I, maybe I was just a little bit less heavy-handed with the dark. Maybe I just used more of the light berry burst and then the the bubble bath. 
because that does look a little bit dark. But that's it. Um, add a couple of gems on. And she, um, yeah, I was really inspired by Gina Kay there. She keeps her designs really kind of clean and simple, just using those big floral stamps, which this one is a gorgeous one. I can see this being used in absolutely loads. So if you were later on joining on, this is the one that we made earlier. And this is made using those masks and just stenciling. And absolutely, you could do this the same way. And you would just use the, the bubble bath and then add on that berry burst or that melon mambo darker pink. Um, and then the, the leaves again, you could just do those in those leaves and it would just be so much quicker. You could, could bash out a load of those really, really simply and then add them onto your card front. There you go. There's an idea for me for on stage, isn't it? Yeah, a very nice stamp set. Perfect. Well, that's it for me today, I think. Um, I will show you next time I was, if I remember, if anyone wants to remind me, please do. But I'm going to show you how to make next week, and the week after it will be because I'm working, a, a Christmas album so that you can print off and then keep some of these Christmas memories that you've got. It would look gorgeous with blue flowers, Anne-Marie. Yeah, any colour flowers would look absolutely stunning. So I'm going to show you how to make that. I'm using up a lot of this. It's a great way to use up um, design series paper, Christmas paper, before it goes um, back in the cupboard. So it's a great way to use up all this paper and then just cut some embellishments and things like that. So um, there's our little team look gathering. I hope no one minds that I shouldn't really. Maybe I should be a bit more careful about sharing my photos online. There's me. You just have to look at my pretty face. Um, but yeah, um, and this one, turn that over, I really shouldn't show them. Um, but yeah, look at that. Lovely, lovely papers, just perfect for Christmas. Uh, this is when we went to West, We went to um, uh, Windsor Castle. I had an audio guide. I absolutely love an audio guide. There is something about, Russ hates them, and I just they just make me so happy when I find that they've got an audio guide, especially when it was free. And I just have my headphones on. I think it's because I get a bit overwhelmed by noise. And I can't concentrate on anything when there's too many people around. So but I can just put the headphones on. I've got the nice guide talking to me. I was having a whale of a time. Loved it. Look at it. It's beautiful. These are printed from the magazine. I bought the brochure and then just photographed the brochure. It's a bit naughty, but it's only going in my album. So these are six by six. Six by six pages. They're so cute. I love, yeah, love, love a mini album. Um, and it's just a really nice way for me to remember because I've got a terrible memory. This is where we went for afternoon tea. So yeah, I'll show you more of this. Anyway, I'll show you the whole design, um, and we'll we'll make we'll make a, the album. We'll make the album up. Oh, the went the lights look as well. Amazing! It was uh, we had such a great Christmas week together. But yeah, you just before you put all your Christmas papers away, let let me show you how to make a mini album with them, and then we'll get them all used up. Right. Oh, oh, I'm so glad you had fun, Judy. Thank you so much for popping on, everybody. Uh, thanks, Emma. Thanks, Rachel. Um, yeah, thank you for joining me. I wouldn't do these lives if it wasn't for you guys coming on and having a chat to me because I'd get really bored if you weren't here. Um, I will be working nights next weekend and potentially the... Let me just double-check my diary because I like to tell you now so that you know. I do try and post it on Facebook. Uh, January, we're January, I'm um, going into nights, so just one week away, and then I'll be back, so yeah, have a fabulous, fabulous new year, look after yourselves, be safe, stay safe, uh, but have fun, whatever you're up to, if you're going to bed early, then you're, you're in the best place, I think, take care, enjoy, my absolute pleasure, guys, thank you so much indeed, yeah, really, really enjoy your New Year's, whatever you're up to, uh, and, uh, and look after yourselves. Stay safe, and I'll see you all again really soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.